Hmm. Oh, you're here! <laughs> Again, my name is Teacher Annika. Hey kids, my name is Teacher Kiko. Teacher Kiko and I were just plotting out our next steps towards the third stop of our Jesus journey. That's right. And the map says that we should go... Um, Where? This oh, way. This way. Okay. Last week, we learned that Jesus sacrificially lived a perfect life so we could become the perfect sacrifice. That's right. I wonder what we're going to learn today at this stop. Wait, we're right here. Right here. Ah, Ta-da! Ta See, the substitute death? That doesn't sound mm. too jolly, Teacher Annika. Yeah, I, I know, I know. But I think there's a happy ending to this because... Today is Resurrection Sunday! Oh yeah! Happy Resurrection Sunday, kids! Now, let's see what the map tells us. Right. I think the map is telling us to play an emoji game. Whoa. Whoa! These pairs of emoji represent a mystery word that the kids need to guess. So we will give you 10 seconds to guess the emoji flashed on the screen. After 10 seconds, we will reveal the correct answer. Are you ready? I'm ready. You're ready? Okay, <laughs> let's go. Let's first hear. Give them 10 seconds to guess. Ready? 10, 9, nine eight, 8, 7, seven 6, six five, 5, 4, 3, three 2, two one. 1. Guess? Did you get that? Woo, okay, the correct answer is... Starfish! Wow! Okay, great job, kids! Here you go! Ta da! Fire. Fire. Emojis. Fire and. And a dog. This Is dog looks like. Is it a dog like... or a panda? It kind of looks like a panda. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's brown. I'm gonna, guess it's, I'm gonna guess it's a dog. It's a dog. Okay. It's probably a dog. Ready? Three, two, two one. one! Did you get that? And the correct answer is. Hot dog! Hot dog! Oh, that's your favorite? That's so cool! Next, ready? Da -da -da -da. Oh no, I'm afraid of this teacher. You're Annika. afraid of that? So scary. What's that? But I like this. I like this word. What is that? I think it's... Uh, mm. Is that a fly? Could be. An oh. insect. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. okay, 10 seconds is done. Are you ready to know the correct answer? Correct answer is Spider-Man! Have you watched the recent Spider-Man? I have and I love oh, it. Oh, I'm a fan. I love more. Okay, you ready for more emojis? I'm ready, Teacher Yeah. I'm so ready. What's the next emojis? Fear. Okay, hmm. what is that, Teacher Kiko? It looks like rain. Oh, a and cloud. An, arch, an arrow and a bow. An arrow. An arrow and a Ooh, bow. What's that? So a rain cloud and an arrow and a bow. Okay. Ready? The correct answer is rainbow. Rainbow. Okay. I love rainbow. Me too. Oh, we I love, love everything. Love rainbows. <laughs> They're so nice. Yes. They represent God's promise to us. Right. That's why That's I always cool. like to be reminded of rainbows. Uh, ready for the next? Da 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 da. Hmm. He seems oh, mad. Oh, I'm mad. Or you could say angry. Angry. Yeah. Right. Angry. This man looks angry. He looks angry. Decided he's a bird. Okay, ready be? for the correct answer? I am, I'm ready. Okay, now it's... Angry Bird! Do you I remember mean, playing this game? I remember it, but I'm not really addicted to it. I got addicted to it oh. for some time. Next! Oh, here we go! The next emoji. A very smiley face. A smiley face and a kick. It looks like, can you, yeah. can you copy it? <laughs> oh, that's that's me whenever one. I see cake as well. Oh, I'll be so okay. happy to see cake. A cake. A cake. <laughs> okay, ready to guess the correct answer? I hope you guys are ready. And here you go! Hey, the whoever's watching this, I hope it's your birthday. Happy uh, so birthday. Our April celebrants, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Yes, and there's our last emojis. Good this job, guys. A, this one's a bit hard. Just a bit. What's that? That's a watch. Oh. A watch and someone who looks is like it, he's celebrating. It's an iPod. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it's a, it's took a that literally, watch. teacher. Anita. <laughs> and ready for the correct answer? And here you go. It's watch, watch party. party. Yes. Oh, watch party. Let's do something. That's so Let's fun, especially party. when you watch with your friends. Watch right. parties are so much. Fun. And 
That's all! Congratulations and great job for guessing all the emojis. That one was a bit hard. Yeah, that last one. And I just want to give a shout out to our friends, Carries Ezeir and Hezekiah and JD Cordoval. Hi kids! Hello! How many did you guess correctly? I hope a lot. That one was a bit hard, no, Teacher That Annika? Last one. Yeah. Anyway, the mystery words were substituted with emojis, right? That's why you were able to guess them. Substitution means replacing something or someone. Someone. That's right, Teacher Tico. And our lesson today is the great substitution that Jesus did in order for us to be reconciled and joined back to God. That's so true. Let's call on Teacher Trisha to ready our hearts to receive God's word for us today. today. Hills may tremble, your love it stays, your love it stays. Though the waters rise and my heart may stumble, your love it stays, your love it stays. for this wonderful day. Thank you for giving us another chance to worship you and to know more about you. I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive your word, to receive whatever it is that you want us to know and to have the grace to live it out, to be able to obey what you want us to do. We commit this time of worship to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Another way of worshiping God is through our giving. So, you may give your tithes and offering by following the instructions flashed on the screen. Bye, God, Balloon. See you later. Where are you going, Charlie? I'm going to the playground to meet with my friends. Hold on! You can't go to the playground right now. Why not? It's dangerous. The warden said they spotted the mountain lion in the area. Stay in the farm and don't go out. The next day, Charlie is by the window. He sees his friends waving at him from behind the farm gate. Charlie, what happened to you? You missed out on the best playground day ever. Hey, Mindy. Hey, Zach. Grand Palu stopped me from going. He said there was a mountain lion in the park and that it was dangerous. That's silly. There was no mountain lion. Come with us today. I don't know. Your grandpa worries too much. It's safe. 
You'll see. See? It's safe. No mountain lion here. Best part of all of this is that there's no one else in the playground but us. Henry, have you seen Charlie? I have an idea where he might be, Grandpa. This is great. I'm glad I listened to you guys. See? I told you there'd be nothing to worry about. <laughs> Charlie! Henry runs and pushes Charlie out of the way, but he gets bitten by the mountain lion instead. Her cousin Candace immediately calls 911. I have good news. He's going to make it. Charlie and his family breathe a huge sigh of relief. Grandpa, I'm so sorry. I disobeyed you. I forgive you, Charlie. I'm glad you're safe and that Henry is alive. I love you both very much. This is all my fault. I don't listen. Cousin Henry got hurt because of me. When you were being cornered by the mountain lion, Henry pushed you out of the way and took your place instead. And just like what Henry did, Jesus also took our place. The Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He gave his life for us on the cross so that we can be saved. We were supposed to go to hell forever, but Jesus took our place once and for all. When we were supposed to die, he died instead. But that's not the end of the story. After three days, Jesus rose again and he defeated sin and the grave. And now, anyone who puts their trust in Jesus will be saved and will live forever in heaven with him. We are alive because of what Jesus has done. Grandpa Lou, I want to trust Jesus too. How do I do that? Uh, just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me and for taking my place. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for the gift of salvation. I am now alive because of what you have done. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Hi kids, I'm Pastor Bodhi and I will be your teacher today. Before we get to the word, why don't we play a quick game of switch or pass? Here's how it works. You have an item, I have an item. Tell me in the chat box if you would switch with me or pass. Game? First, you have an iPad, I have pad paper. Would you switch or pass? Second, you have a clean pair of sneakers while I have you socks. Would you switch or pass? Finally, you have 1,000 pesos while I have a bag of trash. Would you switch or pass? I'm guessing you all passed. After all, why would you switch with someone who has something worthless compared to what you have? I know of someone who did. He switched not for his own personal gain, but to show love. And when he switched, he didn't just give an item that was important to him. He gave his life. He gave his life so that we could have ours. Most of you already know that I'm talking about Jesus. We took a quick break from school and from work this week so that we could remember and reflect on his sacrifice. Last Sunday, we remembered how people waved palm leaves to welcome him as a king when he arrived in Jerusalem. Thursday, we remembered how Jesus said his final goodbyes to his disciples during the Last Supper where he also washed their feet and then shortly after he got arrested. Friday, he was scourged, spat upon, humiliated, ridiculed, beaten then crucified on the cross, taking the torture and the death that was supposed to be for you and for me. But it didn't end there. Three days later, Sunday, as people went to the tomb where Jesus was buried, they were surprised to see that it was empty. They thought to themselves, where is Jesus' body? Was it stolen? No, that day, what we celebrate today, Resurrection Sunday, the greatest miracle this world would ever see happened. Jesus rose from the grave, winning over sin and death, just as the scriptures declared. Today, we celebrate his life, his death, his resurrection, because it all reconciled us to God. How did that happen? 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21 says, when anyone lives in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new 
is here. All this is from God. He brought us back to himself through Christ's death on the cross. And he has given us the task of bringing others back to him through Christ. God was bringing the world back to himself through Christ. He did not hold people's sins against them. God has trusted us with the message that people may be brought back to him. So we are Christ's official messengers. It is as if God were making his appeal through us. Here is what Christ wants us to beg you to do. Come back to God. Christ didn't have any sin, but God made him become sin for us so we can be made right with God because of what Christ has done for us. What exactly happened here? God performed the great exchange, the big switch, Jesus' life for ours to save us from humiliation, from punishment, from death. Kids, we have all sinned. Lying, stealing, cursing, talking about others behind their backs, hurting our family and friends. We are all guilty. All of these evil acts are part of our record. And because of this, we have been separated from our holy God who hates sin. Sin is so bad that the punishment for it, no matter how big or small we think it is, is eternal death. And we are all headed for that. No one is exempted. Not you, not me. Wait, we don't want that. Is there any way that we can save ourselves from it? Like, can we pay for it? Kids, can you imagine owing someone gazillions of money? Do you think you can actually pay for that with your own efforts? Even if we work our whole lives, I don't think we can. Unless someone really, really, really rich, like a king, helps you. But why would a king do that for a nobody? God knows that we cannot pay for our sins. And in truth, because we rebelled against him, we deserve to be punished. We all deserve to die. But just as our God is just, he is also so loving. Instead of punishing us, his heart is to save us. That's why he sent Jesus Christ, the greatest king, to help us, a bunch of rebellious nobodies. While we have a dirty record filled with all of our sins, Jesus lived a perfect, sinless, righteous life, resulting to a squeaky clean record, something that we all need. Then he took our punishment. God said, Time out, substitution. He put Jesus in our place. Jesus took our sins, then he went to the cross to die the painful and humiliating death originally for us. Those who put their trust in him experience the big switch. He takes all our sins and our worthless, dirty record and gives us his righteous, clean record so that we could be sinless in the sight of God. Away with this, now we are clean, we are pure, we are holy. Can you imagine that? It's a crazy and unfair switch. Jesus had everything to lose and nothing to gain. Why did he do that? Jesus died in our place so that we could be made right with God. Let's say that together. Jesus died in our place so we can be made right with God. Jesus did it because he cares for you and me so much. He did it because of love. Now, instead of eternal death, those who believe in Jesus receive eternal life. We are not worthy. Certainly, we are not deserving. But because of God's great love for us, He made a way for us sinful humans to be reconciled to Him. Our power truth for this week, remember this. Every part of what Jesus did was His sacrifice for us. Let's say that together. Every part of what Jesus did was His sacrifice for us. And our power verse comes from John 2.2, 2, which says Christ is the sacrifice that takes away our sins and the sins of all the world's people.
Jesus loves us so much that he gave his life so that we could have ours. How should we respond to this great love? First, we receive it. Let me ask you kids, have you put your faith completely in Jesus and on his sacrifice on the cross? Next, we respond with worship, committing to obey his word, his commandments every day. And finally, in verses 19 and 20 of the scripture we read earlier, it shows that we are called to respond by being messengers of Jesus Christ, sharing to others about the forgiveness and the salvation that he gives. After all, he didn't just die for you and for me, but for the whole world. Who among your family and friends need to hear about this big switch today? Let's pray for boldness so we can share it with them. Lord, we thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus, for coming down from heaven to earth to suffer, to die, to pay for our sins. We receive your forgiveness. We receive your love. We receive the eternal life. And as we experience your love every day, Lord, I pray for each and every kid listening to this video, give them boldness so that they can be messengers proclaiming the message of salvation to everyone around them. Once again, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, Teacher Kiko, what are you doing? Isn't it obvious? I'm looking for Easter eggs. Oh, oh, okay, wait, where? Oh, oh, oh there. one. Oh, right here. Oh, now open it. Let's see what's inside. It's a toy. Those are toys. Those are blocks, I think. Little blocks. Legos, little Legos. Little Lego yeah. blocks. Uh, funny, right? Eggs are supposed to have yolks and whites in them. But when Teacher Kiko opened this egg, he found this. Because someone switched and replaced the contents of the egg with this treat. And just like what we learned today, Jesus took our place, died in our place, so we can be made right with God. That was the greatest substitute of all. Now, for a family con, the question is, knowing what Jesus did during his crucifixion and resurrection, what is one way you can celebrate Easter? Talk about it with your family. Welcome to Craft Time with Teacher Plum and Marco! That's me! First, we want to give a shout out to Caleb, Daniel, and Joshua Dagon. Hi kids! Uh, Marco, do you want to say hi to anyone? Yes! Hi Bez from San Diego! See you soon! So Marco, today we are celebrating a very special holiday. It's called the Resurrection Sunday. Yes, because Jesus died and rose from the dead, we can leave behind our old sinful self and live the new lives that honor God. You know that? Yeah. So do you celebrate Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday? Yeah. In kids' church? Yeah. So when was the last time you celebrated in kids' church in, re in on-site? Mm, Maybe like, two? Like 2019. 2019, yeah. That was before the pandemic. And what did you get? Like, did you get treats or balloons? No? You, did you win prizes? I think, yeah. 
I, I think we gave out cotton candy because it's a special holiday today, kids. The Resurrection Sunday. So for us to always remember the Resurrection Sunday and what it means to us, that means we leave our old sinful self behind and live new lives. Let's create a butterfly craft because butterflies actually are new creatures from old uh, squirmy what do you call it? Cater worms or caterpillars. Yes, of course, to make this craft, we will need, so here, Marco, we have three different objects, but we're only gonna use them to trace the circle. So I have a large circular object, which is the double-sided tape, a medium one, and a small one. So you can use anything that's circular in shape at home. We'll also need some colored paper. So Marco chose blue and green. Also, we need some board paper. So this is board paper. We can, we're only going to use half of a letter size. And also, we'll need scotch tape. But be careful because this part actually is very sharp. Also, we'll need some scissors, a pencil or some markers, and what's this called? Glue glue or a glue stick. So let's begin our craft. Okay, so the first step for this craft is to cut out the circles which are going to be the wings of our butterfly. So I have here the blue paper that Marco picked because he likes the color blue and I'm going to fold it into four sections and Marco can you trace? We'll start with the biggest circle first. So this is my biggest circle. Margo, can you trace the circle over here using a pen? So because we folded the paper into four, once we cut this, we are going to have four circles automatically. So it's just much quicker than having to cut one circle per trace. I think that's good. That's great. Thank you, Marco. So I'm going to cut this, but before I cut this, let's take another piece of our blue paper. And again, I'm going to fold it, but now we're going to use the medium circle. So can you trace this? So as you can see, this is what Marco did. And when I cut it, We now have four blue circles. So this is for our medium circle. But before I cut this, Marco, can you make two circles of the smallest circle? So for the green paper, this is going to be the decoration of the wings. So you know how butterflies have this main color and then they have decorations on their wings or patterns. This is going to be the pattern. So we'll need eight pieces of the smallest circle. So the thing about our butterfly today, Marco, is it's going to be able to flap its wings. We have four of the medium circles. There, thank you so much. And we'll have eight of the smallest circles in the color green. What kind of green is this? Do you know? Light green. Light green. Or maybe it can also be mint green, right? So we'll have four of these. Can you show them the four? See, we have four and I'm cutting another four. And now we have eight. There you go. Next is let's take our half sheet of board paper and fold it in half so we have a quarter size of board paper. So it has to be board paper because it's going. we need thick paper to do the flapping thing of the butterfly. Later, I'm going to show you how it looks like. There. Okay, so let's set this aside. Now we're going to glue on the wings. So do you want to do it with me or do you want to 
You want to do it with me? Okay. okay. So let's, I'm going to do the right side of the wings and Marco is going to do the left side of the wings. Let's first put glue over here, just in this area. Can you do that? Just here. Just enough glue. That's great. And then, let's take one large piece of circle right here. But yours should be here on the opposite side. Here, there. Can you stick that there? There you have it. So can we show them how ours looks like? So it has to be the mirror image. So one is here and one is here because the butterfly has one small wing and then another bigger one, right? So the next step is to take the medium-sized circle and place it here on top. Let's move it a bit over here, there. So it kind of looks like a, what does it look like? A blue snowman. Yeah. <laughs> so next step is we're gonna flip it over and make sure that we cover the back side of our butterfly. So take as much glue as you can, put it here so we can sandwich it, sandwich the board paper with the blue paper. Thank you, let me borrow this glue. So I'm gonna be placing glue here and on the top wing as well. Can you show them? So these are the wings or the base of the wings of our butterflies. Now we're gonna add the pattern that we cut from the, what color was that? Green. The green paper, yes. Okay, Marco. So using, I'm gonna do mine first and then I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna show the kids at home. So I'm just gonna put glue here in the center of the circles and I'm gonna stick them with the green circles that we made. So our wings are gonna look like this. Nice. Okay, so let's do it on the other side as well and on the other pair of wings. Is this craft hard? No, it's, it's quite easy, right? But later, when you're done assembling the butterfly, you can start decorating it with stickers or maybe using colored pens or maybe colored pencils, drawing more detail. Yeah, go ahead. So we have our wings. Can I borrow it? Now we have to assemble the wings. So watch very carefully. And if you can't do this on your own, always ask help from your mom, your dad, your ate, your kuya, your tito, tita, lolo, lola, whoever you have at home, ask help from them, especially when using scissors. So for this step, let's cut until half over here. You see it? From the bottom up and on the other pair from the top going to the middle. So what we did here is we cut slits so we can assemble this into the butterfly. You see it? Now it's gonna be able to flap its wings. But of course, so it doesn't move around like this, let's take our scotch tape and using just one piece of tape, tape it down in the middle. Let's cut the excess. Now it's much better and it doesn't move around that much. So you can also put tape here on the sides. Let's put for hours. One more here. Okay, so Marco, we're almost done. What do you think is missing on our butterfly? The body. The body and the... The head. the head. Okay, so we're gonna make the body and the head and we're gonna be right back and show you what the final craft looks like. Okay kids, so we're back with our finished butterfly. As you can see, we put the 
body and the head. And Marco is gonna show you how it flaps its wings. It's cool, right? Yeah, so we did a head and we did the antenna and the body. But we're not done yet because I think Marco and I want to put some stickers on it. So go ahead, Marco, and put some stickers. Maybe you can put like stickers for its eyes. There, we're done. So can you show them? It's so cute. Great job, Marco. So kids, I'm sure that you'll have different looking butterflies at home. But the important thing is we remember our lesson. So I'm sure that you know the life cycle of a butterfly, right? If you've ever read The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle, you know that butterflies come from caterpillars that look like big squiggly worms. So butterflies look like these giant worms in the early stages of their lives. Then they wrap themselves around in, in a what? What do they call? Cocoon. A cocoon. So as they get ready to have a new life. So when they're ready to have the new life, they come out of their cocoon and they emerge as a beautiful butterfly. So they used to be the creepy, do you like worms? No, I don't like worms either. So they used to be creepy crawly caterpillars that look like worms. Just like us, we used to be our old, not so, our old ugly sinful selves. We were not very pretty because sin makes us disgusting to God. But because Jesus died instead of us on the cross, we are given a new life. Just like how this pretty butterfly was given a new life from being a not so very pretty worm because our sins are forgiven we are right with god and we have a wonderful purpose in christ so that's it for our craft time for today of course marco did you have fun yeah. Do you want to say bye? Bye. Bye, everyone. So if you want your photo of you and your craft included in our compilation next week, please send them over to our email address flashed on the screen. That's kidsfort at victory.org.ph. Deadline of submission is Monday, 5 p.m. And all photos submitted will be used by Victory Kids Fort in social media posts. So in case that you don't want your photo used, please indicate that in your email. Also, for every photo that you submit, you receive one raffle entry for our raffle for the month of April. Happy Resurrection Sunday, kids! Bye! See you next week!